You're listening to an Awkward Human podcast on the 5x5 Network. If you want to find out more about this show and all the other cool stuff that we do, visit awkwardhuman.com. Hello and welcome to the Awkward Human Survival Guide. This week we're talking about... The Oclophobia Boat. Penis Envy Goals. And Toilet Vagina. Welcome to the episode. I'm Adam Dodges. I'm Erica Elson. Today we're here with Richard Cardenas and Stuart Wade. Welcome back. Long nope. time no see. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> sorry, I'm already jumping on top of your words. I'm sorry. Oh no, that's <laughs> please, really funny. Please you gotta jump fight on to get a word in here sometimes. Oh, it's, All that's of true. her words. That's true. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. So uh, I didn't realize that it's been like a year since you were last on the show. I think it has been about that long. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, our new system should be able to tell us exactly when you were on last, which it doesn't because I guess that information didn't get programmed in yet. Uh, but if you were on more recently, I would have. So you haven't been on the last 40 episodes. So yeah. that's pretty close to a year. Yeah. I'm pretty um, sure it was sometime last year. And that's my fault. As usual, I always think like, oh, I've been bugging people too often and I never am. But I got, but at least we got you back on here sooner than, uh, than Ashley, who I think I waited like a year and a half almost, oh. which is silly because, you know, she always has something really interesting. Not that you don't, I'm not trying to, <laughs> but I didn't take it. I'm not, I'm not, yeah, it's, it's not like our, our, uh, our, have you lost weight conversation? <laughs> Oh um, boy, <laughs> I'm not. We're not getting back into it. But uh, you didn't mention that I've lost weight. No, I haven't lost weight. But I'm sorry. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I weigh exactly what I weighed when I was here last. Yeah, no, you are remarkably consistent. I, That's a compliment people should give more. Yeah, yeah, you look exactly the same as the last time I saw you. Good job not I fucking tried, it up. I tried to politely say that to someone, but I said. That his body is very evenly distributed, and I don't think it sounds like a compliment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, I say that about Richard. Well. well, yeah, last time. I, I'm, because I'm envious well, of not it. Last time, but when I've talked about my weight with Adam, and you, I think, before, too, you've both said, like, yeah, but when you ga- gain weight, it's, like, evenly distributed. <laughs> yeah, no, your body never looks weird. Yeah, it, if I do, like I get tits, anywhere. I get an inner tube. My butt it g- works on. evenly, <laughs> so that's fine. I seem to people seem I, to like my butt more when I'm larger. But you're lucky people, if you gain like the crowds. Yeah. I I gain all in my stomach, dated, yeah. including him. You've yeah, got, I don't think my butt has changed since I've been like a teenager. No, it's my butt. Always I, I could probably stomach. put on fifty pounds and not an ounce of it would show in back. It would but all. But you know, be right grass is always mm-hmm. greener. There's yeah, a bunch of people yeah. that are like my <laughs> butt won't fit into pants. I can't wear pants. So. Oh, I didn't. Yeah. I didn't mind it that much. I mean, I, like I thought I'd prefer it smaller, but everyone else liked it. So I'm like, okay, whatever. It's not bothering me. <laughs> it's um, just back there, it's just doing yeah. its thing. <laughs> if I still have the ass I did when I was a teenager. I wouldn't have an ass. So does that hurt? Not having an ass? Yeah. I had, yes. a, I had a friend, <laughs> I had a friend who was always like, I basically don't have an ass and her tailbone always hurt. Yeah. You yeah. know what? I didn't fall down a lot. No, like no, sitting. Just no, sitting. Just, just sit and be like, mm. Like no oh. you're in a, a theater that has you know, like bench seats or whatever. Yeah. It's excruciating. My tailbone actually does hurt a lot yeah. when I sit too long. Yeah. Mm. I never thought about that not having an ass because it's behind the ass. It's not just the tail. I guess the whole thing is I'm just, just sitting on nothing. System. Yeah. Yeah. I, <laughs> I guess if you have a big butt, yeah, then it can, then it, yeah, just, well, yeah, then it yeah. expands behind you to yeah, support the tailbone. Yeah, I uh, imagine. I don't know. It's like cushioning <laughs> on sneakers. You yeah, know? I would imagine. Yeah. Is it? I wonder if this is like a white people thing though, because I feel like I feel like white people always have kind of that lower curved butt if they have a butt at all, but non-white people. I don't know about you, Richard. I, I never actually checked your tailbone position. <laughs> But but there are a lot. I think you, it's you, normal. You don't see <laughs> do tonight. <laughs> you, don't, you don't see higher up bubble butts on on white people. Just I, other sometimes. Not there are, very there are often. definitely women that have well, maybe, higher up. Butts, maybe surgically. Well, white. yeah, with surgery you can have anything. But yeah. um, no, I think there are. We some, know. But... <laughs> yeah, we do. Well, we know someone who has an up butt that's not natural. <laughs> not natural. It's very oh, right. up, but it's not natural. Our tennis. Hell. Yeah. Oh, does we it haven't seen it in a while. It's not Unnatural. a bubble butt. It just looks much higher than a butt would ever be. <laughs> oh, yeah, and you're like, oh, that can't. It doesn't grow that way. Yeah. Like, that's, that's yeah. Not well, natural. he also has the sh- these tiny shorts that pull it up. It's like it doesn't wear underwear. It's, it's, oh, my. it's right there. Oh, I forgot about that part. Right there, yeah. yeah. Uh, Anyways. Yeah. yeah, I got the, I got some good awkward stories about about that guy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the the uh, I don't I don't know why I bring this out in people so easily. I, I, I know why it happens. I just don't know how it happens so fast. Um, but it was like, 
five minutes into knowing him, talking about how, about his like bondage sex stuff, he he brought it up. <laughs> I'm like, this is this is actually going into territory the way that he was discussing it, where I the rare occasion where I feel like this is a little uncomfortable for me. Wow, like this is too fast. Too fa- I, I don't too have time to for you. process. Okay, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, because I don't. I obviously don't have a problem talking about bondage. I just oh, obviously. it's just I wasn't expecting <laughs> it, and <laughs> and all of a sudden it's just like getting bigger and bigger and bigger. This whole the, this whole world that he's in and all these things he's doing. And it's like before I have a chance to get to grasp one of those things, it's we're on we're on to the sling and not literally, not literally. Not, figuratively. No, okay. this is this is during a tennis game Got with it. lots of other people okay. around. <laughs> Um, which, there are people that will try and get you into a sling within oh, five I know. minutes. Oh, I know. They've succeeded before. <laughs> oh, but oh, not within five minutes. Oh, okay. This is my friend Pervert Mark. But that we we don't need to get into another story. Oh, okay, I, I'm pretty sure I've told that before. I did not care for the sling that much. It is very supportive, though. It's much better than a hammock. Okay, you don't good get like know. stuck in it. You, once you're in, what? it's really comfortable. You've had sex in a hammock. No, I've just been in a hammock. I can't even get out of a hammock. I was going to say, I can't even imagine sex, sex in a in hammock. I can't, yeah, I can't even get in and out of them. I didn't really have sex in the sling either, but... It, it. Well, yeah, when, I mean, I was making out with somebody, I think, and there might have been a blowjob. I don't remember. It was a long time ago. But I would try anything once, so... Mm. It, was, it wasn't that bad. I, I don't have a problem with the sling. It's just... One of those... It's, it's, like, harder to talk about than it is... I mean, to, like, for someone to just bring up out of nowhere, then... Uh, most things but it's really you know it's just a fuck hammock so there's that anyway <laughs> Stuart, story. tell us so. about what you've been up to <laughs> yeah unless uh, it's a fuck hammock we're past that okay we're past the fuck hammock um i i've had a busy year or mm-hmm. so since i last was here so i think when i was here before i was talking about i was either about to make or had just made uh, my first drama a feature mm-hmm. Uh, it is now done and made, and we actually premiered it last month at the San Diego Gay and Lesbian Film Festival. Mm. And we just found out a couple of days ago we're going to be the opening night film at uh, Barcelona. Gay oh, wow. oh, wow. That's which awesome. is very exciting. And especially, this is one of those like mm. unbelievable coincidences. Ruben and I, my partner, we mm. have been wanting to go to Spain literally since we met, eight years. And we finally are like, fuck it, we can't afford it. We're never going to be able to afford it. We're just going to, we came across a really good fair. We're just going to book it and make it happen. So we booked it like months ago, and then it, coincidentally we get into the festival and it overlaps wow. by a day. Wow! And we're like, okay, well, there's no way they're gonna like let us, you know, open their festival just so we can come and introduce the film or whatever. We're like, well, we could ask. So we're like, well, we're gonna happen to be there if you if you wanted us to, uh, you know, to do it. We, you know, we can only do it the first day, the opening day. And they're like, yeah, we'll make you the opening night movie. Of all awesome. So I'm going to be in Barcelona. Wow. <laughs> yeah, really cool for, for this film festival. And um, and the festival that we did have, well, we had two now. I, I didn't go to one because I, I couldn't. It was in Kansas City. But Yeah, but they were. They said it was your favorite film, right? Yeah, Kansas City. They loved it. The programmers there said it was their favorite movie that they screened. Um, and in San Diego, it went over incredibly well. We were there and we participated in Q&A and we had people coming up to us. And this one guy, older guy, the festival was celebrating its 20th year. He says... I've been here since the beginning. I've been to 20 years of this festival, and this movie is my favorite movie. Oh. And I was like, wow. That's, <laughs> that's really sweet. That's really sweet and really awesome. And we had another guy come up, and, um, you know, the movie deals with cancer and death and, all, you know, fun stuff. <laughs> but, I mean, it, it's not a comedy, but it does have some light stuff. And yeah, it's not story. like... It's not... Yeah, it's, it's not, not a downer. It's, it's not, not a dark. A, yeah, it's not, it's not that dark. It sounds like it, but it's not. But anyway, he came up, and he's like, you know, I, last year I lost my partner of, I forget how many years... And, you know, this movie really captured what it's like to, to, you know, be with somebody at the end, you know, when you love them and you're, you know, you're going through this together. And I thought that's, that's really great. Yeah. That, that I mean, that's an... to capture something. So, okay, we're recording again. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. So um, I felt really good that we were able to capture something that uh, was real and that really spoke to people. So uh, it was great. We got really good feedback. And um can't the, remember. Yeah, the movie's called Say Yes. The movie is called Say Yes. Yeah. Mm. And uh, we've got it out now with a f- few distributors. And, you know, so we'll see. Hopefully it'll be available commercially, you know, maybe later this year. We'll, we'll, People will be able see. to watch it online or on DVD. Or... Yeah, that's the idea. But we're right now not yet. But mm. that's why we're talking to distributors. We might self distribute. Sort of depends what kind of offers we get. But yeah, one way or another, we will get it out there probably later this year. Probably 
maybe in time for Christmas. We'll see. You'll have to remind me when it's out, so we'll have you back on earlier. Okay. Can <laughs> they can actually watch so it. So people can actually watch it. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Uh, do you have a website, though? I can't remember. Um, we have a uh, Facebook page, which okay. is just, you know, I think it's just Say Yes, the movie. Um, so people could check that out. Yeah. yeah, we'll throw that in the uh, show notes with okay. another yeah. link, which we're going to get to in a second, I guess. But um, you, because you, uh, you have your Coffeehouse Chronicle shirt on, that's I your. Do. Yes. Is it? I, I know. I know. It started as a web series, and then you have someone. Is it still online, or is it? Uh, no. The the first season, we uh, took it down from offline when mm-hmm. we uh, re-edited it. We had shot some additional material, and we re-edited it as a feature. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it is now that is commercially available. You can get it on Amazon, and uh, you can either get the DVD or you can watch you know video on demand. Um, and we've gotten some really good feedback from that as mm-hmm. well. Um, but uh, yeah, the unfortunately the first season now you can't just go online and watch it. You could mm-hmm. while it was underway, but now that it's oh done, yeah, but people can. Right. I, I mean more that people can go get it now. Yes, not not for, free, yeah, just, not for free. Not for free. Just a general can go get it. And it's mm-hmm. also s- uh, screens if you happen to belong to Reverie or, or Deco. That's or what I was trying to remember. Two, it's um, so, of these gay streaming services. Mm-hmm. Um, it's on both of those. So. Oh, doesn't LaShawn work for Reverie? Our Maybe friend. that's why that sounds familiar. LaShawn from, I mean, call it, I guess we haven't seen her in a while, but we went to school oh, with her you, audience. <laughs> okay, I'm pretty sure I know LaShawn at Reverie. Really? An African American? Yeah. Lesbian? Yeah. Yeah. That's her. Uh, that's crazy. Yeah. Okay. What a small world. Yeah. No, she's great. Oh, I'm gonna have to I don't know her well, but I mean, I've you know I've been to Reverie's offices num- a number mm-hmm. of times, and and she's there, and she's great. Yeah. I remember I saw a LinkedIn update that she was working there a couple of years ago or something like that. And I was like, oh, this yeah, is cool. And then I meant to yeah. send her a message or something and say, this is really awesome that you're doing this. Streaming is the future. <laughs> and then I guess I forgot. Um, um, but it's good to know that she's uh, still doing well there. Yeah, I think she is. Yeah, yeah, yeah she's great. Oh, cool. So, but you're on to season two already. But yes, yeah, so we are now. Um, uh, in fact, a week from today, we're shooting the first two episodes of season two. Mm. So that's uh, that's very exciting. Mm. And um, I actually I do have an awkward story associated with this. If you mm. uh, casting it, it, with casting this, yes. <laughs> are, are we in the awkward story phase? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Always. Are. Okay. So. Uh, you know, we're doing two episodes, which means there's two different sets of casts that all have to, you know, basically be available at the same time. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that that's a bit challenging. We'd scheduled the whole thing for Saturday the 21st. Everybody was free. Everybody was available. And then one of my actors, who's also a friend, uh, came to me and he's like, you know, I, I, I've got this thing. It's not mandatory, but I, you know, I really like to go. It's, you know, it, it's my, you know, one of my good friends. And there's any way we could change it i'm like okay for you we'll see if people are available the next day and so i sent out an email and did all this and looked like everyone was available and so we rescheduled and then when i sent out the new call sheet one of the actors wrote back and they're like um you didn't read my email very carefully did you so she said yes i'm available sunday and then there was this part but only from 7 to 10 p.m. or something i was like um yeah that's not we need you the whole day that's not at all that's not the same as being available and my bad for i just saw the yes i'm available part um so the only way to make this work we we couldn't go back to the 21st mm-hmm. so we uh we would have to just extend the day and go to like two in the morning Okay. And everybody kind of reluctantly, you know, like, okay, well, if we've got to make this woman happy, okay, whatever. So I did that, sent out a new call sheet again, and th- also sent out, the because I'm you know, i always tweaking the scripts. I sent out, oh, and by the way, here's the final version of the scripts. So this actress then gets back to me, and she's like, oh, I guess I'd never read the whole script. Oh. <laughs> I can't do this. At what? all. What? Yeah, she's like, I, you know, my main gig is with uh, family. Ne- I don't know if she works for, I think, abc family or i don't know she works for some i got a bunch of gay shit on there well yeah exactly i don't know but anyway she's like you know the content is you know i'm like okay the content didn't change between the first half that you saw and the rest of it i mean it's the same content but i don't know somehow she got spooked and what, what she backed would, out entirely can you um can you say well, uh i guess what the content was at least so categorically the, I, the the episode is called politically by and it's okay. this woman who discovers that her boyfriend uh, who she knew was bisexual is actually bisexual in terms of that means she, her she has a line you know i you know i thought that meant you just supported the community i didn't realize it meant you fucked dudes <laughs> yeah. and he's like yeah that's what 
bisexual means. And she's like, well, I'm bisexual, but I've never done anything with a woman. (laughs) (laughs) And she just thought that's what it meant for him, too. It's like, oh, yeah, we all have these attractions, whatever. I've never heard anyone say that. I mean, it's like the vegetarian who eats chicken. I just (laughs) haven't encountered it first Um, or yet. I, I've encountered it uh, with not so much with bisexuals, but a lot of like pansexuals mm-hmm. and people. It's like it, it's this sort of theoretical concept. Yeah, it's it's like, like, oh, I'm attracted to everyone. But mm-hmm. when you talk to them, it's like, yeah, but I don't want to do it. They, right. They've only really ever dated one mm-hmm. or the other. It's, you know, they're not really. Yeah. And anyway, so it, it, it's that a, it's that romantic, emotional attraction. Right. It's like, I don't want to. I don't want to take a dump on anyone's parade, but it's the sexual part kind of means something. I think of that. Right. Like you can have your own term. You can be, that can be your identity. But I mean, like I think maybe don't call yourself bisexual. Yeah. If you're just romantically into another sex or or emotionally into another sex, because it's not or a gender, I should say, it's not because because it, it's about it. You have to have the sex part. Right. Yeah, and there should there should just be another term so people don't get confused. Well, and there's already so many terms. But, yeah, that's um, true. Uh, but anyway, so there was this confusion. He thought he was being completely open and transparent, and she took it to mean something else. And anyway, they run into an ex boyfriend of his, and she freaks out. And anyway, so she's got a couple of these lines about him fucking dudes. And you think maybe it's the language? But I, I'm like, but you know, that line is in the first half that she the, of the script that she had auditioned with. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, there's nothing in the second half that's any different conceptually than in the first half it's just kind of you know there's more of it i don't know she freaked out and just dropped out entirely and i'm like wow okay so now i i get to awkwardly go back to the cast and say never mind that last call sheet we're going back to the original (laughs) and everyone was relieved not to be there till 2 a.m but still i was like god i feel like an idiot after rearranging the whole thing for this woman it turns out she well she's the idiot who didn't read the script well she said i never sent her i was like oh didn't i so that may be my bad <laughs> did, did okay. you well you could you could search i and could find check out. and but she's probably right i probably <laughs> just but did she audition she well that's the thing she had but she didn't audition with the whole script she had sides but and the thing this, is it's a short thing the sides were most of it but this, it was it wasn't there, the whole thing. There was she no was fucking. Uh, but that's it. All that part? stuff was in there. Really? Yes, oh, it the was. What? Okay, well then. So that's why I don't understand. I'm like, there's yeah, nothing in the sense. last two pages that is any different. So, but that's really anyway, weird. I mean, the good news is we there were we had like an embarrassment of riches of women who were really good for this role, mm-hmm. and we in fact we narrowed it down to our top three, and they were all really, really good and just totally different physical types. And we'd ended up going with this one woman because she um, she had this kind of edgy rock and roll thing that just played really well with the actor that we were doing. Um, but anyway, the woman that we're now going with, she um, has a whole different vibe that was also just really great. So it's she's it couldn't be more physically different than the, the first girl. You know, the first girl was blonde and very thin. This girl's That's got dark hair her. and... and uh, is a little bit plump, but they're both like really, really good and really funny. So I, I don't have any regrets that, you know, I mean, I know it's going to be a great episode. I just wish I hadn't put the whole crew <laughs> this yeah. and up and down and up and down. But I feel like just in terms of, I, I guess, look type, um, the, this new girl sounds much more interesting. The first one sounds like that's who you would expect to be in the role, an uptight blonde woman. Um, yeah, this is, I this think is, this is more interesting to me. Yeah, I think it might be. I think it might be. I was really torn about the casting. Uh, so, uh, you know, uh, the world, the universe uh, made the decision for me. But I'm very, <laughs> but I'm very happy with this girl. She's great. So. It's good that it all worked out. The guy gets yeah. to go to his friends thing. You don't have to deal with whatever her issue was. And right. Yeah. Exactly. Because I don't think casting. Yeah. No, I certainly don't want anyone who's going to be uncomfortable being in the episode. That would be crazy. So, yeah. Yeah. And this uh, this girl Megan, she's uh, very enthusiastic and seems great so cool. so i'm excited yeah so we're shooting next week do you guys uh plan on releasing it the same way you did with season one or is it gonna go straight to no we're i think we're gonna do the same thing so we'll um i'm hoping to have this first uh, we're shooting two episodes uh, the first one i'm hoping to have edited it up you know maybe in october and then the next one maybe november or december and yeah we'll do the same thing they'll be for free on youtube hopefully getting a following and then you know once we have the whole season up we'll we have this additional footage again that I've scripted that's going to not be part of the web series but then we will put it uh, in the movie and and release it as a DVD that's my hope if we can raise enough money Mm -hmm. Um, money is always the issue unfortunately with this sort of thing it's uh, even though we're you know super super low budget like Mm -hmm. crazy low budget it's still 
you know, I'm just uh, unfortunately not independently wealthy. <laughs> I don't have the, the money to just throw at this. So that's why we're running this Indiegogo campaign right now. Yep. Uh, see program notes. You're about 10% of the way with yeah. most of the time left. Right. Um, to uh, $10,000 that yes. you're trying to raise. So yes. we will have that in the show notes. Um, Good. If anyone wants to support the show, yes. uh, they can Please do that there. Do. Absolutely. Yeah. And then we'll throw a link into the uh, to Amazon Reverie or Find, cool. a, okay. find a few places, Facebook okay. page or whatever, so people can watch it so they can yes. see, actually see. But you have a lot of information on the campaign, and there are a lot of different reward tiers so people can support yes. if they have five bucks or exactly. a lot more yes. than five dollars. And, yes. and if you have, uh, if you give enough, you can get one of these cool T-shirts that I'm wearing. Nice. And we also have this logo on coffee mugs, since coffee has chronicles. Of that makes sense. Uh, <laughs> I thought it made sense. So um, yeah, yeah, and uh, you can also, yeah, if people want to break into Hollywood, that we can uh, offer you. Associate producer credit, executive producer credit. We also have walk-on roles, all kinds of fun stuff. Cool. Do yeah. you sell any merchandise separate from the campaign, or does it um, all come the, with the campaign? Uh, the shirt actually you can buy independently. Okay. Um, right now we don't. Uh, we're not selling the mugs separately, but we might be because I think we're gonna have to order like a ton of them to get a good price. Uh-huh. <laughs> so we'll probably end up like, hey, buy these. Uh, but right now it's just the shirt. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, well, if you have, it, you, we should talk about the mugs later. I know how to make that happen easily. Oh, good. Okay, good. Yeah, I need, I need help. I need advice. This is, yeah, if, if you if you look around, you'll find plenty of like on demand printed <laughs> options. <laughs> yeah, all, you've been all through this before. Yeah, yeah, that is true. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's a, I don't know. I like I like having all the makings of a business. That, that's about as far as it goes. I want the supply <laughs> closet and the swag. <laughs> and then I just want to make other cool shit, but I don't want to go have business meetings. No, no. Who wants that? <laughs> that my, I love playing in the supply closet in my dad's <laughs> office when I was a kid. That was like my happy place. <laughs> With all the paper clips. What? With all the paper clips. Oh, you know, that wasn't... I liked uh, highlighters. I liked permanent <laughs> oh, markers. But my favorite was the label maker. The only thing I didn't oh, like about label it... label makers are awesome. It, it was much better once you got an electronic one, but this was the old kind <laughs> where you had to squeeze it oh, so hard, yeah. which is still hard to do, I think. It is, absolutely. It, it takes a lot of grip strength, but I was does, like three years old, grip, and I was like, yeah. get this <laughs> fucking yeah, label. No, it probably gave you good grip strength. I like, came in later when you hit adolescence. Wait, you're talking about the one that was punched in? <laughs> I, I got creative. We had the internet, so we had jackinworld.com. So I learned about fucking pillows and mattresses and everything. <laughs> Don't fuck a mattress. Wow. I, I, I didn't go there, and <laughs> so I can't speak from experience, but I think if you think about it, don't do it. <laughs> you have got, you've got, you're the flat, fleshlight generation. Go buy a fleshlight. You were saying about... You guys are the same generation. What are you talking about? No, I'm talking to the audience, not oh, to the Richard. Audi- I thought yeah. you were talking to Richard. Yeah, okay. no, you, okay. the audience is in front of me. Richard Got, slightly different. Oh, sorry. Okay. <laughs> I thought you were talking to Richard. You talked to him like he's a different generation. He's like, what, no. two years younger? Uh-huh. <laughs> you know, but he does fall into a different category sometimes. There are certain things oh, that he had that I didn't. I guess even a year or two, you can make a difference. Yeah, yeah that's true. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think it's the it's a specific line that got drawn in, the, in, in cartoons oh, okay. uh, with us, and that was pretty much it, but... Uh, I mean, we seem to have a similar video game upbringing, but cartoons were like the style change over like between the three years when I stopped watching and or, or when I started and he he started. I don't know. There's a three years when we were getting too old for cartoons. Like, right? He was still watching. Them. It's like SpongeBob. Yeah. Like people who mm-hmm. are just like two years younger than me are like obsessed with yeah. SpongeBob, and I was never a part of that. Yeah, group. they are right. really obsessed with it, and it's weird being around that. But SpongeBob <laughs> was out when we were like teenagers. I, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, so, like early teens. Yeah. I feel like it was just like people who were like, "I'm still gonna watch these kind of shows, well, even though I'm like, like nine. Oh. They're like nine or ten years younger than I am, though. The ones I'm thinking of. Oh, so well, because Richard was saying people who are like two years younger than we are, well, and th- there were adults yeah, that know. got really obsessed with SpongeBob. That's true. So yeah, mm. I mean, they did have the first apparently gay character. Was he like actually gay or? I have no idea. Because <laughs> <You're talking laughs> I, I know they cut the purple Teletubby was gay, but not really. They just not really. Just yeah, some, that's, like that's like the Babadook being gay. Yeah, but I mean that's because the Babadook is a sexy motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> so it's that one's fine. <laughs> um, I I love that. That's my favorite. <laughs> um, yeah, we can answer some questions now though. Cool. If I, everybody's yeah, up for it. Sure. I think you're starting us off, Erica. So our first question is from Timothy, who writes, Hey there, awkward humans. My name's Timothy, and I'm afraid of cruise ships, and my fiancé won a cruise vacation on a public access game show. She, Greta, knows about my phobias and decided straight away that I don't have to join her. Phew! Or so I thought. 
Retta is now saying that she will bring along her second best friend, Michael. Michael flirts with her all the time. Michael is mostly gay, therefore I have not gotten jealous, but he will play for the other team when drunk. Greta has <laughs> short hair like Ellen, just not like a lesbian. <laughs> if I were drunk, I might think she looks like an adult boy from behind. <laughs> all in all, I need your help so I can overcome my fear of cruise ships and not risk a drunken mishap between my fiancé and her mostly gay runner-up best friend. For the details, I'm afraid of cruise ships because of seasickness and crowd entrapment, not sinking like the Titanic. I would have the same fear in a floating mall or a refugee boat prior to the Holocaust. I would not have survived wow. the Holocaust, even though my name. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> even though my not name. Not a lot of people did. Dark place. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> also, were there a lot of refugee boats in the Holocaust? I think, like when the people who came to New York. I don't know. It's okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There were there were some. I guess I was imagining like little like canoes with like refugees sn- <laughs> trying to sneak in, you know. No, and I was like, I no. thought there were like big boats, you know. Yeah, no, no. I'm thinking. I think he's talking about like booze crews or larger size. Okay, okay. Uh, even though my nickname is Tiny Tim, not because of my penis, I am Jewish. Please don't be offended. That's what? just a Holocaust <laughs> joke I like to make about my troubles. Can you help me? I'm seeing a psychiatrist, but it will take a year. She says I need results in a month. All creative ideas are welcome. Finest regards, Timothy. I mean, this actually seems pretty easy to solve, but I'll, I, th- I think there's some other Try stuff that you don't want to say. <laughs> I think some people subscribe to hypnosis. I know that people will do hypnosis to like quit smoking and stuff, and supposedly it's worked for them. I don't know that it would work for me, um, but you could try that. I mean, you're you're seeing a therapist, and uh, who knows? I, yeah, I mean, I, I think it definitely works for some people. Um, I would say, I, how big is the boat? Because my understanding Cruise is some of these, are huge. They're huge. Mm-hmm. You're not going to have seasickness. I mean, it's like... Oh, my mom did. Really? Yeah, she but had to take pills all the time. also you can get a patch. You can just put a patch on your yeah. arm and yeah, you're fine. Yeah, that's true. But I, I mean, I think in, in a mm-hmm. lot of the cases, yeah, unless you are hit like true. a big storm, you barely know the thing's moving. It's so big. Yeah. I mean, I never really noticed it. It's more when you get off the boat that it's yes. a problem. So don't get off the boat, Timothy. Ever. <laughs> but, <laughs> until just spend it, the until rest of your life over. on the boat. Yeah. Well, I mean, like when, when it docks, you can also wait a couple of hours because it will settle more. Mm. And but like, and I'm saying not when, don't, you know, if it, I'm assuming it's going to stop in Puerto Rico because, it, well, maybe not now. But no, <laughs> like every, oh, I, it's just every cruise I've ever heard of has stopped in Puerto Rico. But uh, yeah, I didn't mean to um, that yeah, to be a not, joke. That was yeah, not like the Baja cruises. I don't think they go um, mm. through the canal yeah. all the way up to Puerto Rico. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> did he say where the cruise was going? No, no. So we don't know. No, um, but what? Because I I have I know that's not aversion therapy because that's when you try to make an no, undesirable it's, habit um, it's bad. The, but what's the one where you force yourself to immersion, be in a, um, immersion? Immersion yeah, therapy. Okay, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so it sounds. So, it's similar, yeah. The, yeah. the idea is, yeah, you just force yourself to do it, and re- and you get over it because you yeah. realize, okay, nothing, ha- nothing bad happened. Yeah, be around big crowds. Go on, a, maybe take some booze cruises alone, um, and just do that in preparation. Like you got to put yourself in the situation, realize that you're going to be okay. Yeah, and that's that's the only way you're going to get through it quickly. Yeah, um, I'm guessing that the wife and the best friend will be sharing a room. Um, yeah, he said I don't that, know. Didn't he? I, like, talk to your wife. Right, fiance, because yeah. or fiance, because oh, yeah, if I you're so that. uncomfortable with her taking her best friend, who you think that she's gonna cheat on you with, like just tell her, like mm. I don't trust him, and I know you do. He's your best friend and everything, but like I am very uncomfortable with this. Is there anybody else that you could take with you? Well, mm. what I was gonna say uh, or, along those or lines, please don't cheat with your <laughs> gay friend. Yeah, it's like it's how like, about you don't get so shit faced that you cheat? Yeah, just there's that, right. there's that. There's that. I kind of feel like the but problem he's probably gonna be is paranoid not anyway, though. Yeah, yeah. like he the problem is not that he needs to go on the cruise ship. Like these kinds of things are gonna come up again. Maybe she's gonna mm-hmm. want to take a trip with her BFF, and you're not gonna be invited or whatever. And yeah. she's like, he's my gay best friend. We can go on fun trips together. And yeah, that's definitely the I, underlying problem. I think problem. that if you're gonna marry this woman, like you need to feel comfortable with her hanging mm-hmm. out with them. So either yeah, you talk to-, to her and be like, I don't feel comfortable, solve the problem, or like maybe you just need to let go of like your fear because even if this dude is like sometimes not gay, she's gonna have straight friends. Like she's gonna do stuff with well, a bunch yes. of other people, and you right. have to just be able to trust that she's not gonna cheat, even if the straight person or the mostly just gay to, person hits on her. Right. right. Just to add one uh, other possibility. I think that I, I, it seems like he's concerned because of alcohol, not necessarily because mm-hmm. it's a trip, right. and that there's gonna because just having been on a cruise, you and I both know 
Um, and maybe you, I don't know if you've been on a cruise. I haven't. But, but there's alcohol all everywhere. The all time. Day, yeah. Heard. You can't get away from it. I mean, I guess when I, I could, cause I was nine the first time and <laughs> yeah. when I was older <laughs> after that. Hopefully they weren't serving you at that point. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it costs money, but I, wasn't your cruise, didn't they give you free drinks? No, the, uh, all the food was free, but the alcohol cost money. Oh, okay. So that, that was just your cabo It wasn't super vacation. expensive though. So it's yeah. like, and it, it is everywhere. And you charge it to the room, right? You charge it to a special card that you have. Mm. And so it's easy. It's, it's really easy. Um, you don't have to carry cash anywhere and they have drink specials every day. And then at night they have bars that open like just for the nighttime and they're like, come try this thing at this bar. So like, it's, it's hard not to drink, but it's not that hard not to get drunk. Like right. I didn't really get drunk the and entire time because I didn't want to be drunk on the boat. Yeah. Really. Yeah, I'm curious why he's so nervous about this happening though. Cause and it doesn't sound like it about has. Yeah. The dude getting drunk, right? And it's like, there's yeah. a bunch of people in, in my life who I'm sure if they were drunk and like super drunk and like me might try to make a pass and I'd be like, nope. You know, right. and it wouldn't even matter if I was drunk or not. I would just yeah. be like, no, we're not doing yeah. this. Yeah. I mean, I think the bigger yeah. issue is is trust of his fiance. Mm -hmm. It's like, y if you're going to marry this woman, you should be able to trust that she's not going to just like get drunk and have random sex. Right. Yeah. I mean, I people hope. get drunk all the time <laughs> and they still remember, oh, I'm oh, in a happy relationship. Right. You know? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. um, I have, you know, never. And also you don't, you can drink and not get drunk. You know, sure. You know, so, yeah. Or you can but, deal with someone or, who's drunk and hitting on you and be like, just because you're drunk doesn't mean this doesn't is going to happen. Right. You yeah, know? It's not. So I, I, to me, that's the bigger issue than, you know, I agree. trying to force himself. Yeah, to I don't think he should go on the cruise. I think he should have the conversation. And if the conversation... Well, it wouldn't hurt to get over this problem anyway. Yeah, but if you're he has right. a therapist who says, you'll be fine in a year, like, he'll mm. get over it. Yeah, yeah. but you he know? could also... He, I, don't, I don't know why it would take a year to get over something. Like, maybe she means fully... But he should be able to, like, get good enough to go on a cruise in a month, I'm whether thinking, or not he's like, going to go on. I'm if yeah. I were the fiancé and I had never done anything to create this trust problem or whatever, mm -hmm. and I had made plans with, well, we don't know you, that, though. and we were going yeah. on a vacation together, I wouldn't want someone to turn around and be like, oh, I don't trust you, I'm coming on the vacation now, kick mm -hmm. your gay, almost gay friend out of the mm -hmm. room because I'm coming. Then that would make me feel like, oh, I can't do anything without mm -hmm. you because you don't trust me. What if, yeah, yeah. I mean, there, there, here, here's a flip side that this guy, that she has never done anything to make him feel like it, it's, it would be a problem, but he flirts, she enjoys the flirting, um, he gets drunk and he can get very touchy, mm -hmm. like drunk people tend to get, they're going to be sharing a room presumably. Sure. Um, so he gets touchy with her, they're in the same room together, they're very small rooms. Yeah. So yes. where, you know, where do you go? I'm assuming she's not in a suite because this is a public access prize. So <laughs> where do you go, you know, in that situation? I guess you go to the bar maybe or like go hang out outside of the room or get another room if possible. I, I'm not really sure, but it's, it's a bad situation to be in if something like that's happening. In which case, if that is even like a remote possibility, I would probably, as her, not want to bring him along. Right. So, I mean, I, I feel like if that's a real possibility and mm -hmm. she feels uncomfortable with it, then, like, she should just be like, hey, mm -hmm. this can't happen, like, yeah. while we're on this boat. Yeah. Um, I mean, presumably, they'll be sleeping in separate beds because most cruise ships, they just put the beds together to form mm -hmm. a bigger bed. Yeah. So, but people make dumb decisions when they're drunk. They don't even remember it sometimes. And so if he's being really handy and she's drunk, she may not want to do it but and regret it the next day, but not be thinking too much. Well, that's so probably his shit fear. Gonna, yeah. yeah. So it may not... The, I'm, the whole point of that is that maybe it's not a trust issue, but it's a recognition of human behavior. Sure. I don't... Well, it doesn't sound like that, but yeah. that's kind of how I well, think, I think about things. So I wanted yeah. to at least put that out there. But I think regardless, I think Eric is right. He should talk to her about yeah. it. Yeah. Because either, sure. you know, either way, he needs to be open about how mm -hmm. he's feeling about it. Yeah, and it sounds like he does not want to talk about it because he's yeah. just mentioning it like, this is a problem, but don't worry about that. Get me on a boat. Yeah, and yeah. it's like they're so engaged they the now. Way. They're going to be married, hopefully, for like the rest of their lives. And yeah. he's her best friend. So like, this is going to come up again, mm -hmm. for yeah. sure. Yeah, yeah, this could be pre-marriage second best friend, Erica. Is he her first best friend? I hope so. <laughs> yeah, I hope that's I what that means. That, but yeah. I didn't. I just was, I just, when you said that, I was like, wait a minute. Because I was just assuming it was like, oh, it's one of her girlfriends. It would be the, the oh, maid of honor. Right. But um, yeah, I mean, like, the thing is, it, it's, I, I don't know, it, it's weird because, uh, like, I've thought about that with Richard, and I'm like, well, it's like, I don't think about you as a best friend because you're my boyfriend and we're together, and, like, that's an upgrade. Wow. Or a separate thing. 
But no, I, I mean, offended. It's a, well, you fall into the category. <laughs> I hang out with you more than anybody else, mm-hmm. and I have a closer relationship with you than anybody else. But, yeah, but I feel like it. Like, category, why don't I reserve? Yeah. Like, do do you have to be my boyfriend and my best friend? Do you have to be my spouse and my best friend? Like, someone else should get a little. I think it's just unfair to the rest of the population. But you don't have best friends me. at all. What? You don't have best friends at all. Yeah, I don't really. Yeah, I just <laughs> have close friends. Okay. What? Top liver? Oh, should, I'm his yes. wife. Oh, yeah. Yeah. oh, that's right. That's right. Excuse Excuse me. Me. Yeah, we haven't talked about that in a while. You, I have a higher there, ranking actually. as well. Mm-hmm. Oh, um, okay, yeah. But when he says like her second best friend, it does sound like a little bit douchey to be like, because mm-hmm. I'm her first best friend. Yeah. yeah, so hopefully that's, well, Who knows, Timothy, yeah. we're giving you a hard time. Yes, <laughs> poor Timothy. Ho- hopefully, hopefully you're a better human being than we've painted you out to be in some of these <laughs> cases. And if not, there's, there's always up, you can always go up. Uh, from where you are. <laughs> I, I just think Regardless that, of whether you're great or not. I agree with everyone that there needs to be a conversation and I think that he should let her know or at least she should ass- reassure him that like whatever his intentions are, those aren't my intentions and that mm-hmm. won't happen. Like I think that has to be good enough um, yeah. if he's gonna, if she's gonna insist on taking yeah. him on this trip yeah. and he's just gonna have to not worry about it because like erica said there will be future trips where he's not included yeah and it can happen with anyone well yeah and it doesn't even have to be a trip i mean is she not allowed to like go out for the night with getting her drunk drunk with her friends right i hope it's just this situation you know i hope it's like this is because you're getting married and you don't want it to get like you don't want it, it 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 could be the you know the wedding's in like six months and uh, and this came up, and he's like, "Oh no, I can't have this be a pre-marriage issue. Like she's gotta, she's gotta make the cheating mistake after we get married, <laughs> because then, then at least, then at least, like we have that established. Like if it happens before the marriage, then it's gonna feel like it's, the marriage will never work. But I, I mean, uh, like, I just think there's a lot. There are a lot of variables here for yeah, the psychology we, someone could go through in this, this specific situation. Yeah. So. Hopefully, hopefully that's what's going on. Timothy's just a little situationally nuts right now. Um, I can understand that. Like, I would probably have similar concerns if you and I were getting ri- married, Richard, and then you were going on a boat with some gay dude that I thought, you know, you know, well, I'd fuck him if I were not well, smart enough to not do that yeah. um, in this situation. But I mean, like, if it was some hot guy, I'd, I'd be like, hmm. Um, but that doesn't mean that I wouldn't trust you to go. It, mm-hmm. But I w- that enters your head. And yeah. Yeah. In some cases it turns into what happened with timothy maybe um but that's probably all we can help with at this point um hopefully that'll work out for you and uh tiny tim if it uh does not or if you have an update feel free to write in uh, especially if we got that totally wrong and you meant something he's else. gonna be like she came back from the cruise she's now engaged yeah. to him <laughs> she's pregnant Our relationship engaged, is yeah. over and i'm never getting on a boat <laughs> yeah. JK, yeah, that, aloha. Well, then there you go. You could quit the therapy and not even worry about yeah, yeah, that be a bundle. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I mean, it's like it's not like you have to go on a boat. It's I, I like I like going. I like the nine year old cruise I went on. I, I did not like the other one. I went on the Rosie O'Donnell gay cruise, which it is true. Gay parents have some of the best behaved kids I've ever seen. But <laughs> they're still kids. <laughs> yeah, there's, they're still kids, and they still get up early. Yes. And the, on that cruise, apparently 6 a.m. was the wake-up call that would blast in your room. So it didn't matter oh if the kids God. woke you up; you would get woken up oh by God. that. Okay. But then, um, you know, the friend I was with got quarantined during most of the cruise. <laughs> wow. Uh, it's a long story, so I won't tell it. But <laughs> and they were like abusive. The, some of the staff. Um, it, it was a mess. But then I got sunburned because I fell asleep on the top of the deck when I went Ouch. walking to explore. And so I, it was so bad, I was sick, Ooh, like like wanting to throw up sick. Yeah. yeah, and so I basically couldn't go out for a day, and then um, and then my friend was quarantined, so I ended up hanging out with this lesbian family, uh, which was really awkward um, because their their kid was hilarious. He was this super nerdy little boy, and that I'm like, mm, I can get along with that. So we have a few things in common there but the the it was like there there was the biological mom um i can't remember what the nicknames were but one of them was like mama and then the other one was like not quite the mama <laughs> there was something something a little bit condescending and you could see that in the relationship that this one oh i remembered her name now but i won't say it yeah um but she would uh she was like really uh uh commanding and you could I don't, I don't know if this was like some sort of erotic thing that they did that translated into real life and it was totally consensual or if the, uh, if, if the dominating mother was just 
really not treating this woman well. Mm. Um, but they would, you know, there's there's some uh, there were some consequences for the kid that seemed a little bit weird, and I ended up hanging out with him for three days, so I got to know all about that. Um, had had uh, dinner with Rosie O'Donnell's ex-wife. Oh, it was it was an interesting cruise. I bet. <laughs> wow, did you get some dirt on Rosie? Well, only that she never comes out of anywhere. Pretty much, she's like very uncomfortable around people. I guess. Oh, okay. which is which is strange. But I, yeah. she she submitted a video to the cruise. She didn't want to come <laughs> anywhere. It was like too much for her. Was she actually well, on the cruise? <laughs> no, no, no. But but uh, it was Kelly, right? I don't. Her remember. wife. Yeah. 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 Sound actually sounds like looked like uh, Timothy's wife, fiance. Sound looks like. I didn't know like what a Timothy's Susie Orman looks like. type. Well, Timothy's fiance has blonde, short hair like Ellen, right? Oh, oh sorry, you're right. Yeah. Boy, you read that closely. Okay. The, <laughs> well, we took a laughing break. <laughs> <laughs> it stood out. Um, but I also read. Yeah. Try, I say today I read all of them read in them advance ahead of time. Yes. So. Yeah, I usually try to do that, so I'm not. Um, uh, so I know what we're. Well, let's we're doing dock now. this story and Good one. go hey, on to the next. Nice done. Yeah. <laughs> you're you're on top of it these days. Richard. Thanks, thanks. <laughs> yeah. All right. So our next question comes from anonymous. Okay. Hey, a shorty for you. Do girls get penis envy? My girl is always on about having a dick. Wants to know what it's like, etc. I've actually talked about this before. Um, is there pegging in my future or what? Just got to know <laughs> if I got a problem. Uh, you don't unless she brings it up and you, you don't have, have, have to get pegged. Yeah, do you think she's going to rape you with a dildo? Like, he's like, ugh, do I have a problem? Like, am I going to get surprised butt sex? Maybe he's <laughs> like, I don't want to get pegged because then when I want to do something weird to her, she's going to say no. That I get that right. vibe from him. <laughs> but I think it's funny to refer to it as like, ugh, do I have a problem? Yeah. Because she's talking about dicks. Do I have a problem that my, my girlfriend wants something from me? <laughs> my, I, maybe. Well, I mean, if she is talking about it because she is perhaps mm-hmm. trans that that could be a problem yeah that, for, for both him of you. uh for him yes yeah for her it might be a, an it might be a revelation yeah. right it might be a good thing but it might yeah for him it might be a problem in the relationship um but sounds, most likely that i mean yeah it that's sounds like a normal not, curiosity to me yeah well we, had a, we talked about this for like a half an hour in an episode once about you and Lindsay were talking about holding dicks holding oh dicks while you pee oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah i remember that well so the difference is he says my girlfriend is always on about having a dick so i think the part about wanting to know what it's like yes totally i think all women go through that but it's just because you don't have it right so it's like it's not so much about like oh it's a penis i wish i had a yeah. penis it's like this is a thing that i will never experience that it's totally different what is it like to do all of these things? Like, I'll never know what it's like to experience an erection. Yeah, because guys have buttholes, so you get a little bit of an idea of what the insertion factor or something coming in or out of it right. is like. And yeah. also, like, guys can go inside the vagina, but mm-hmm. we can't go inside the dick. Well, you can with a sounding rod. I don't but, want to. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but I'm saying, That's like, one of those fetishes that I think that no, with, have your yeah. fun, but please, yeah, no. I can't. With all the sex acts involving the vagina, guys got a pretty good idea of, like, oh, this is mm. how this works, and here yeah. are all the parts and whatever. But, like, you know, standing up while peeing is, like, totally different than just sitting down and having it come out. I just realized... It's the next question that's making me... I, I was going to say... I was going to make a joke, but I realized I just read that in the next question already. Oh. I will mention it then. Okay. Sorry. Continue. Anyway, so yeah, I don't think it's weird, but I think that if you're worried about pegging and you don't want it, you can just be like, this isn't something I want to explore. Can we do something else? Like, mm. But it, yeah, it doesn't not really sound like she's brought that I up at all. No, I think, no, she's, I think yeah. she's freaked out I, because she's like, what is it like to have a dick? Right. Dicks are cool. Tell me all about them. Yeah, mm. which... I mean, be happy she wants to know about dicks. Like a lot of women right now are very anti-penis, <laughs> at least in stand-up comedy that Richard and I've been watching. Is like, don't send pictures of your dick. Don't send pictures of your dick, and that seems to be a popular thing. It's like they don't want to see it, but it's I, I don't know. Just I think be, it's different when you're in a relationship. Yes, it's very yeah. different when you're in a relationship. Yes. Yeah, then I would not ask consensual. a random stranger questions about their dick. Right, but well, I ask Jacob questions about his dick all the time because you, like, oh, I you know might. this. If we had a guest on and we were talking about. But dicks. that's not a complete stranger. Well, yeah, and uh, well, that's, it's not yeah. like she was on an app and some guy just like sent right. her a dick. Pic. I'd be like, I don't know you. Why do I want to see your dick? Well, maybe next time you do get a uh, a, a series of dick pics from foreigners on Facebook, this is a specific instance. <laughs> it has happened. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Then you can be like, hey, so um, I'm not interested in the picture, but I have a lot of questions. <laughs> but I do have But questions. I have a boyfriend, so I don't need to ask these other people. I yeah, can just ask him, and then it's not weird. Well, yeah. you know, you have a primary care physician, but sometimes you need a second opinion. Mm. 
But then, I mean, you got you got. I mean, three I've never been with right anyone now, so. who's uncircumcised, so I guess that could be an instance where it's like never, oh, never, no, where I have to be like, oh, what is this like? I haven't experienced this before. Oh wow, I have. I would have. It's harder. I I, to I would. Do, in I, my opinion, because harder you know, I got to picture everyone's dick. Well, I pictured Mr. Table as uncircumcised. Mr. Table. No. I forgot. Oh, oh, right. I remember yeah. Mr. Table. It's been a long no, time since we talked about Mr. Guys table. To hook up well, with. he's half oh. Jewish. So that's actually not surprising. Uh, but there uh, I've been I with yeah, with a name like Mr. Table. Are, <laughs> How can yeah. you not tell? Hello. Is Table a Jewish name? <laughs> no. I've been with multiple guys who are not Jewish but at all and I, they've I just, all been circumcised. I mean, it's harder with uncircumcised penises because you have to be a little more careful with the foreskin so you don't rip it. Really? Yeah. I don't recall. I mean, if you just yank on it, it can hurt a lot. I, I guess. That's I'm, what I, someone with an uncircumcised penis told me before I got into it with him. So okay, well, it wasn't, it wasn't even my fault. Different with, you know, kind of mm. how aggressive they want you to be. Some people really like yeah, that's kind true. of rough handling. And some people, regardless mm. of whether they're circumcised or not, do not want mm-hmm. to be rough mm-hmm. handled. So Yeah, it um, is It is uh, more pre-lubricated. So that is one of the advantages Yeah. Um, in terms of ease, I guess. Yeah. But they're they're not. We've gone off topic. You really have. Okay, sorry. We're still t- no, we're still talking about dicks. This was a dick question. It's a dick question. Yeah. I mean, basically, he doesn't have a problem, and if he's if she starts mm-hmm. talking about pegging and he's not comfortable with it, then they can just talk about it. Yeah. Just say no. And you can be like, "Girl, I don't want it." Or maybe like just try a finger and see how you feel. About uh, yeah. That, you know, <laughs> yeah. I don't think she's gonna go from like, "Oh, how does a dick work?" to "I'm pegging you tonight." Yeah. Right. A lot of guys like butt play straight guys like butt play i i they just don't, don't know where it came there. from but th- it's there so well uh, and, and yeah nothing wrong with it in case that implied otherwise but they've got the, the prostate yeah use yeah. it well and, and yeah there's nerve endings all around the anus yeah. i mean it's get a not... good yeah if, if she gets a good peg <laughs> form where it, it curves up touches the you know the nickel inside of you and you have a very powerful orgasm because of it, you may think differently. Or just don't do it if you don't want to do it. Um, But we have another question. Our next question is from Jasmine. She writes, I love my boyfriend all as well, except he says, careful, careful, when he's putting his penis in me, (gasps) like it's a grand piano getting lowered into the 21st floor penthouse. (laughs) I want to laugh, but it kills the mood. He knows, and we Uh, talk about it. That kills the mood, not your laughter. (laughs) But it's a com- I think she means it kills. That kills the mood. She said, she "I to la- want to laugh, but it kills oh, the mood." I read that yeah. as like him doing it kills the mood, and no, she would laugh, no, but no, the, the mood. She means if she laughs, it'll, it'll kill the mood. mood. He knows when we talk about it, but it's a compulsion for him. His first time, he put in too fast and ejaculated into her. The girl told mm-hmm. everyone. Well, maybe he was like fourteen. The girl told everyone in their class, so he got made fun of a lot until he could go away to college. I made a list of new words to say, but he tried, and it looked like he was having a stroke, and it said, careful, careful, and I just waited for his penis to slowly make its way inside of me. You become very body conscious in a moment like that, okay? I've thought of everything while it happens. The worst is when I think of a poop sliding out of a butthole. That's what it's like, but in reverse. I imagine his this is penis what I was of in the is a poop question. sliding into my vagina. It's low, and then plop. <laughs> My vagina is not a toilet, but he fucks it like one. I know better, but come on. He's seeing a therapist, but what about me for the meantime? So that was what I was thinking about in the previous question, is it's like a reverse poop. I was going to make a joke about that. Yes. Yeah. I see what you're saying. So you can experience that, but then I realized I stole it from Jasmine. So I want to give her credit (laughs) without ruining the question. That's a new one. Yeah, we haven't had a new one. (laughs) Um... I, I just don't even know. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the I mean it sucks that, that you feel that way. Is maybe not right at or all. That. Because I was going to say the next time he, or have a discussion prior to him doing it, saying if you say that, like, it really triggers me in this way mm. that I want to laugh and, and it's going to ruin everything and I don't like it. So the next time you do it, maybe we just stop and then he'll have that in his mind. But I think that will fuck him up more than. Yeah, he seems to be very, very, like, I'm very analytical, and I don't want to say that's the same thing, because, but I'll get hung up on a thought, and so it might be similar if he's obsessive about stuff, Um, but I also want to say, I I put this the wrong way, I said, I'm sorry it makes you feel that way, I'm I'm sorry that you are having this problem, not that it's your fault for feeling that way. I have an idea, Mm. it sounds like she's, he's always putting his penis into her, but what if they just start with her on top? 
and he's just lying huh. there. And he, he just, says, careful, careful. And then the piano's really getting lowered. But I think that if, like, if he's not in control, yeah. then maybe that would change something. Because, yeah. like, if she's sliding oh, on to him. That's a really good idea. Actually, yeah, yeah tie him up. But what if he says it? He may st- gag he him. He may still I mean, say put a like, gag well, in him. This is, yeah. You are but in a BDSM relationship I think that's now. the issue is that he's saying it. No, yeah. I know. But it definitely feels better if, like, or not better. It definitely feels different if, like, someone is, like, putting it in or if you're like getting on top of them and so maybe yes. it would just change the psychology about it you know mm-hmm. i don't yeah. know or maybe yeah. he would say it the first time but then he'd be like oh i don't really need to because i'm not doing it i'm not the one in control yeah what if you're into like sleeping fu- sleep fucking like when he's he's asleep and you just sit on it and he wakes up to the fucking and then it's too late that's not consensual well if he consents in advance it is yeah so um but I, guess I mean, your idea is better. I'm just throwing them out here while we have them. Um, I don't remember, but didn't she say that he started saying it because he didn't want to ejaculate quickly? Yeah, and I'm like, so, well, he probably doesn't anymore if he's not 14 years old, you know, like... Yeah, right, but it's, it's so ingrained in him. I feel like even if she's lowering herself onto his penis or, like, grabbing it and inserting it, whatever, like, he's still going to have that, like, oh, my penis is doing this thing. What if you played music while you're fucking and you couldn't hear him? And reverse cowgirl. Yeah, as long as you're not looking at him. Well, because then she won't be facing him, and if Mm -hmm. music is playing, she might not even notice that he says anything. Yeah, I mean, there are many positions where you don't have to see his mouth. Um, Reverse cowgirl is less common than doggy style, or any of the behind. But then she still has the control, but she doesn't have to see him for the words. Oh, I see. Right. So it's like the right positioning. Gotcha. But I just, I can't believe that he literally can't control himself saying yeah. the words. I mean, well, have you met an obsessive like compulsive person? Oh, well, if it is truly a concept, yeah, then he he's really gonna have needs a hard to hard time see a therapist. But yeah, is which is good. Therapist. It's good that oh, he, he is because it will, okay. that will, that's like the only thing that I know of that fixes that. So yeah. Um, Cause you have to really go through the pro- the process for a long time. Hmm. I mean, and she described it as, I just waited for his penis to slowly make its way inside of me. I feel like at least if she was in control, she might have less of the body issues that she's experiencing because mm-hmm. then she's like, yeah. we're, we're getting right into it. We're doing it real fast. Yeah. She doesn't have to think about like the poop in the toilet. Yeah. And then also he might get over it faster if he's not coming in you immediately. Um, maybe put on a condom just as a precaution mm-hmm. initially, if you're not using them currently. Um, just to give him that extra barrier, but and, like give help him build his confidence of not I being a premature well, ejaculator. She didn't mention if penetration is an issue as far as like pleasure or anything. So I would say, even if he does come fast, if you like you know go in faster and he comes faster, and that's his issue. There are other things you guys can do and like let him know that like. Okay, cool. You did this. Like you came already, but like lo- now we can concentrate on me or something, and we mm-hmm. can do other things for me. And maybe that might like help him yeah, kind true. of let go of the stigma mm-hmm. of him yeah. coming fast. Or maybe he can well, just pleasure you till you've come, and then he can insert and he gets his too. Did she? Sorry, did she say that that it was still a problem him coming no. too fast? It I imagine like the yeah. that the compulsion just stayed, but it was yeah, just a problem it, in high school. Yeah, yeah, that's what it sounds like. But that may so. also be like, he may think he has this focusing technique he has to do right, beforehand. Right. And if he stops, then it's going to just right. blow out of him. But if she tells him. him, you know, like you said, you know, it's yeah. like, okay, it doesn't matter how fast you come. You know, yeah, we're going to make sure pussy. I'm taken care of regardless. Right. So I think her know. going first is a good call because yeah. then she can be like, you can literally come as fast as you want. And even if he does come immediately, she's like, I'm still good. Yeah, And you're I'm both good, good at that point. And maybe he'll just be like, mm-hmm. okay, yeah. not a big deal then. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, that we for starting off with nothing we, we came up <laughs> I mean, with you guys of did. ideas I, I, I was i was pretty useless on this one actually but uh yeah jasmine i i think i think one or any any one of try those them all let could, us know how it goes but i draw do, us a picture yeah but i would work i i think it <laughs> of your chosen method. <laughs> yeah. we should draw we should draw her a picture of of the current situation of what she's experiencing I don't think that would help her. I know, yeah, but it would help the audience <laughs> enjoy it. <laughs> you could just do your pixel animation. I don't have nudes yet. Hmm. I ha- I do yet. have a guy. I do have a guy in his underwear, but that's it. Doesn't really apply here. Um. Well, I'll see what I can do. I do. <laughs> I do have to. I do have to get some some nudes for fucking. Though. Okay. So it. 
Oh, wait, I do have those two. I have the, uh, the grandma porn girls. Yeah. That's me. <laughs> okay. I, Is that it? Are we have, do we have another there, question? There's a, there's a, no. I needed a visual for Gilf, that's we all. We do not have another question. No, we don't. But So we're going to just end on that. Okay. I guess. Look and, forward to Gilf. Yeah. Um, or behind. I mean, Gilf has been around since uh, January. Okay. But I have a sticker. It's not as gross. Okay. As it sounds. Anyway. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for us joining this us. Week. Call in with questions. We love comments. Them. Comments, stories. Thoughts. Yeah. And we'll be announcing the blanket winner next week. So. Wow. Hopefully. I can't believe we're still doing that. Yeah. We're well, supposed I, to announce it like two weeks ago. I screwed right. up the schedule. So. <laughs> yeah. By the time you see this, uh, there will be a blanket winner. Yeah. Hope, well, if someone has a blanket story. True. There may not be a blanket winner. Yeah. Oh. Maybe I mean, it's, it'll be Darren. <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe i think he enjoyed it the most mm -hmm. he wanted it um yeah, yeah. and don't forget it. to go to the show notes to check out Stuart's stuff yes thank you richard yes well. thank you <laughs> i forgot yeah. about the end plug mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. all right uh Stuart, is there anything you want to get in by the way before we no, say i goodbye? think richard covered it thank you richard <laughs> and show just, notes um yeah show notes and uh, just thank you guys for having me on again it's it's a lot of fun thanks for being here sure all right everybody bye. talk to you next week bye bye <laughs> Do you have a question, story, comment, or whatever for the Awkward Human Survival Guide? We want to hear it. We read everything we get on the show, censored for your privacy if you wish, and might laugh about your problem because tragedy loves humor, but genuinely want to help you out. If you've got something to share with us, even if you think it's stupid, send it in as anonymously or proudly as you wish. You can do all of that at awkward.email. You just go to http colon slash slash awkward.email. Oh yeah, and watch the videos on YouTube, youtube.com slash awkwardhuman.